Now we're going to consider another preference table. Suppose that the plurality method is used on the following preference table. If candidate C drops out, is the irrelevant alternatives criterion satisfied? Explain your answer. Well, let's just start with the plurality method. Now, the plurality method just means that we're looking for the candidate with the most number of first place votes. We're going to look across our row and notice that B receives 90 votes, C receives 75, and A receives 45. So using the plurality method, B would be the winner. Now, let's suppose that candidate C drops out. We're going to rewrite our table, and in the table, we're only going to be considering first and second place, where we eliminate C from the table. So we're going to have our 90, our 75, and our 45. If C drops out, any other candidate is going to move up in the ranking. So here we're going to have in our first column, B, A, C drops out, giving us in our second column, A, B, and C drops out, giving us in our third column, A, B. This time, if we consider the number of first place votes, we're going to have A with 75 plus 45, which is going to be 120 first place votes. Candidate B will receive the 90 first place votes from the first column. So notice that now A is going to be the winner. Let's consider the irrelevant alternatives criterion. If a candidate wins an election and, in a recount, the only changes are that one or more of the other candidates are removed from the ballot, then that candidate should still win the election. This is exactly what happens in this case. Notice that B wins using plurality, C drops out, we just do a recount, but now A wins. And so we'd have to say that in this case, the irrelevant alternatives criterion is not satisfied. 